Hello guys, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. Welcome to The Geek Group. This is the big video that everybody's been waiting to see. This is the official instructional video for everything you need to know to build the GDT driver board, which is pretty much the heart and soul of our miniature Tesla coil kit. So follow mm -hmm. along, and Mr. Kidwell and I are gonna take you step by step through the entire process. If you wanna get one of these kits, you can go to thegeekgroup.org, check out the link right there below, and that will take you to where you go to get one of these kits and all of the companion parts to be able to build one of these, a tabletop solid state Tesla coil of your very own. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take you through the whole process and talk about what it is, how it works, and why. So with that, we should probably get some parts. Yep. Okay. Do you want, we just want to do one? We'll bring the box over, show them what we got. We have, all right, this is the, the, the beta testing. This is, these are the very first kits. Yep, and we got a total of nine. Okay. Three of them are purple. Yep. I got These. a couple of different board houses to try out different suppliers. I like the purple ones. All the rest are green. Yep. They look like that. Those are the green mm -hmm. ones. So they're exactly the same except for the color of the boards. Yep. Um, but the, the handmade by us ones Will are the purple, the purple ones. ones. Yes. So these are the incredibly rare. These are the alpha test boards. Those yeah. are the greens are the beta test. And we're going to sell the first half dozen sets on our website, they are only available to IRC hardcore super turbo freak members. And after that, they will go into full production and we're going to sell lots and lots of these. Yep, the first order will be for 100 boards. Yep. So we'll have, and the, we already have 100 of the um, uh, interrupter boards. Cool. Um, we just need to get the parts for the kits. Okay, this is REL 43. Yeah. I, you just grab baggies. I just grab yeah, baggies. That, that was feeling. relay number 43. <laughs> from All right. Stop. So in the thing, we have the, uh, the board itself. Yeah. There's the board. I'm just going to make a little pile of parts. So there's the board. And we have a couple little electrolytic capacitors. I think there's like six or seven of those. I got five. Uh, might be five. I got five of those. Okay, so we've got five One, little... One, two, three, four. Yep, I'll buy okay, five. Okay, those are our caps. I've got sockets, of which we have four. Two bigs mm -hmm. and two littles. Yep. And then we have chips and what appear to be little tiny caps? Yep, there's okay, like seven uh, ceramic, actually. Okay. There are 7.1 microfarad and 1 330 picofarad. Okay. That's the 330 right I've there. I've got some kind of little... Power controller, maybe? That is a voltage regulator. There okay. are two of them. One is That's a 5 one? volt and one is a 12 volt. Which is why one is black and a little different? No, they're different models, but okay. yeah. I've got our receiver. Yes, that's the fiber optic receiver. It's a Schmidt triggered um, uh, photo transistor, I think, or okay. photo diode. In I've there. got four diodes. That Probably a rectifier. That's for a bridge rectifier. There's okay. two more of the same that are used elsewhere for clamping. Okay. There's a couple of zeners. That's these. Yep, and there's a couple of more over there as well. Oh, I've got a couple of little itty bitty zeners. Yeah. Here, right okay. there. Okay. So okay. actually, one set is um, shock, Shockley? Diode. Shotkey? Yeah, Shotkey. And the other are zeners. Now I've got some resistance. Some resistors, yep. Um, I've got a couple more loose resistors. Yep. Four resistors on the board, okay. two 1Ks, one 10K, and 100K. I've got the big rude red capacitor. That is a uh, varistor, actually. Oh, it's a varistor. Surge okay. suppression on the input. I've got our four, hardware. Yep, 440 screw and nut to hold the um, uh, fiber receiver in place. I've got three little headers. And three little headers to get things on and off. Okay, and then I have our little header here with the jumper. Yes, so I'll explain what that's for in okay. a second. So we're gonna put all this together right now. Yeah, well, we'll show the, let's show the schematic first. Okay, you start talking about the schematic, I'm gonna start figuring out my order of assembly. All right, um, the capacitors are probably gonna go on first. Okay. Now, uh, for this, the uh, circuit here, uh, the upper portion here is the power supply. We have AC coming in here, we're supplying you know, from the 12 to 16 volts probably would work fine. We're going to be regulating this. 
Um, we have four diodes set up as a full wave bridge rectifier going into our varistor. Uh, the varistor is an 18 volt varistor, so you don't want to put more than 18 volts peak into the thing because okay. that'll start interrupting. It'll get warm if you use too high a voltage on your transformer. Um, filter cap. Filter cap, 12 volt regulator. There's the 12 volts going out to the rest of the board. More filter caps, 5 volt regulator, more filter caps, VCC, that's 5 volts going out to everything. Okay. Um, some of the gates and one of the flip flops on the chips are not being used and their inputs are just being tied off up here. Okay. And there and there is power going out to the two chips, or the, well, the two large chips actually. Okay. All right, the circuit has three parts to it really. There's a detector which detects the frequency of our secondary coil. Okay. And that sets up the... And this is done through the antenna? Correct, okay. or a um, current transformer. Okay. This, this will handle either one. Originally it was just an antenna, but I included the second connection and the diodes to accommodate a current transformer if that's okay. what you want to use. Um, it feeds into um, some Schmidt triggered uh, inverters. We invert and then invert back again. So this basically is detecting the frequency that your secondary is running at and outputs it right here. Okay. All right. This here is the driver for your primary. It drives the gate driver transformer okay. for your bridge. This goes onto a toroid that you wind with you know, whatever you need for the bridge that you're actually going mm -hmm. to be producing. That's a different video. Though. That's a different video. It's basically two MOSFET drivers, one with an inverting output and one not. So they're both being driven with the same input. So when one's high, the other's low and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Now, down here is the uh, fiber optic receiver. It's uh, fed through an inverter. Basically, you want to make sure that when the light's on, the coil's on. And yeah. without this inverter, it's backwards. So we, we it, built this to be intrinsically safe. Yes, you unplug the fiber and it's off. Yeah. So that's what makes sure off is off. Um, we feed into a uh, flip-flop. This is in addition to the basic solid-state uh, Tesla coil schematics. This makes sure that when you transition your gate driver transformer, you're turning it on or off at a zero cross so there's no stray energy floating around that might, you okay. know. Um, it's another safety device. It's another safety device. Protects the circuits. Um, one thing we don't have in this circuit, and it's more for dual resonant SSTCs, and that's a current monitoring to shut the thing down if you overdraw current. We're not expecting to overdraw current in this, so we didn't include it, but we put a little header on the board. The output of your flip-flop feeds into this header, and normally there's just a jumper across the middle two pins, so it basically goes out the jumper and back in again and feeds into the enable line on our uh, drivers here. Um, under normal operation for what we're doing, the jumper would be just in the middle two pins and you'd forget about it. If you want to expand beyond this and put current monitoring so you can shut the thing down if you do something you shouldn't, there's a provision to add it in afterwards. And that's a fundamental concept that we really need to address in this, is that this is the bare minimum. This is your starter block. And yes. the idea is with this kit, this will get you up and running and have a good solid system but you can expand beyond this amazingly. You, there's, there's a lot more that can be done. Mm -hmm. It's designed as a prototyping tool. It's designed for you to be able to hack it, and that's what we want you to do. We want you yes. to take this as your base driver, but we've put headers and stuff on there so that you can, off of this, have whole things and right. some of them will be made available as kits. Some of them you have to totally figure out all on your own. Yep. This is like the core. The, yeah. the gate driver transformer is what connects the low voltage stuff to the high voltage stuff. And the high voltage stuff, you could have a half bridge, you could have a full H bridge if you want. It's a, totally up to the guy designing the thing, what he wants to do, what mm -hmm. voltage he wants to drive it at. And there's, Whether there's or not no he, limit to what they can do. Not at all. You can use the tripler like we showed in the tripler video or just drive it direct off the AC line. 
Okay. So there's all kinds of options there, and we're trying to allow for as much as possible. Let's start building stuff. So I've got our board, um, and... You want to start with the smallest parts, because you can flip okay. the thing over and it'll hold So that's going to be the little itty bitty tiny capacitors. Right. Now, bring, right. That, bring the foam over here. All right. I've, I've got right. my foam, and there's one different one that's yep. a little tinier than all the rest. That's a 330 picofarad, and it's C11. So it's way... Our, you show them our, thing. From our schematic, where are we there? 330 picofarad C11. Okay, so here's our board. And C11 and it's down is here. Yep, um, there it is. It's that one. Now, it's a ceramic cap, so there's no, there's no polarity. polarity. So, so I'm going to just stick put it that in through. And just splay them. Don't bend them flat, please. Okay. Just splay them. I just them splayed them. That's good. Now, all and the then other. Then I'll display them. There you go. All the other little caps are 0.1 microfarad, and okay. there's like seven of them. Okay. So. I'm just going to start sticking them in. All right, well. And they're all 0.1 microfarad? They're all 0.1 microfarad. Okay, because I see the value is written next to them on the board. Yes, they are. That's pretty cool that you did that. I aim to please. This is, this is going to take me a minute. I'm going to put them all on here. Yes. And then, then share we'll, it with the world. Then we'll sat, solder the caps on. Okay. Now, there's one that's uh, C3, that's way off to the right side of the board, I okay. think. If you see it and somewhere, I'll stick it in there. It's there, it's wider. Um, that's one that you can swap out based on what you're doing. Do getting. I put one of these in there? Yes, you do. Just splay the leads, it'll go. Here, you splay the leads. Show them how to do that while I'm sticking these in other places. All right, he's, they start out, I don't even know if that's gonna focus. That's point one lead spacing and there, that cap right there, we have a 0.2 lead space hole because this cap, uh, depending on how many turns you have on your gate driver transformer and what you're driving, you may need a different value here. It's something you can experiment with, but uh, I'm just gonna splay the leads out and then bend them back straight, which I'm gonna use a little pair of pliers here to do that so I can get some modicum of accuracy. Kind of a trip having to find all these because I've never done this one before. So it's like, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> okay, I have found all of them. You got six? Okay. Well, I ran out of capacitors. Yeah. So <laughs> here's number seven, and I got okay. the leads a little farther apart. Okay. And it's going to go right there. All right, so, so I'm just going to stick this one right in that weird hole. Yep. And like I said, it's a little larger to accommodate a slightly larger cap if you need okay. it. But so for our that's, purposes, that's we how start it lives, out. right there. And yes. it's just up a little bit. Yep. And, and splay the legs a little on the bottom yep. so it don't fall out on you. Okay. All right. So there's the first step with all the capacitors on there. And you can see that there are capacitors here, 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 and here. Or we could do that in a really nifty animation. You can see them all right there. That's where all the first round capacitors are. These are all the super tiny little capacitors, including the one capacitor that's a little tinier than all the others, and that's C11 right there. Yep. So that one for, right there is scale, the first one that goes in. These things are about half the size of a grain of rice. Yeah, these are tiny little capacitors. So do these first, it makes it easier later on. Okay. And you can see they, they're, I mean, I, that, that's my finger for scale. These are tiny. Okay. So, All right, so now we solder. Yes, flip the board down. Board is down. And Give me a magic wand. I'm going to flatten that one out a little bit. So basically, the cap, oh, I laid that one down a little bit. So right now, when the board's down, all the caps are on the table. So when you push down, the leads are pushed up okay. through the board. And we'll solder these right on camera. Here. Oh, we have to flux first. Flux. Yes. Always flux. I'm flux new to is, this soldering thing, man. Flux is a good thing. Flux, flux. Yay, flux. It makes life so much easier. Now these purple boards, um, they, they did gold flash for free. So all the, the pads that you're soldering on are actually gold plated. Now granted, it's like three thousandths of an inch and there's probably less than a dollar worth of gold. They're pretty, there. man, I'm digging it. But, <laughs> yes, they are pretty. And the gold makes the soldering much easier as a yeah? matter of fact. 
So. All right, grab it. Grab it. You're you're gold. No, you're holding the board. I know. I'm I'm holding, oh, I'm holding. It's gold plated. You're gonna hold the board. I'm gonna do that you're, soldering thing that you're, you're teaching me about. You're not gonna brand my. Finger. I will totally not. Did I burn you in the last one? No. no. See, and that was that was at you at your most vulnerable and dangerous. Now, how sensitive are these capacitors? They're not. Okay. I mean, you'd seriously have to roast them to get. Well, with lytics, they plump when you cook them. This is true. And we're going to have some lytics coming up. Remember to run that. There you go. <clears throat> Much better. Got to touch the, the board and the lead at the same time. Yep. Tell them some basics on soldering while I Basics do this. on soldering. Well, um, solder has nothing to do with pressure. You don't press. If you press, you'll dig the soldering iron into the board and make a divot and might even rip the annular ring off the board in the process. How many times have you it, done that, Paul? Uh, enough that I know you're not supposed to. Um, it's all a question of uh, heat transfer. Um, you want to touch, you want to have a little bit of solder on the end of your iron to start with. So when you touch your iron to what you're working on, the solder will kind of splay out onto the part and the trace on the board. And the, um, it's, it's a function of surface, heat transfer is a function of surface area and temperature difference. The iron is presently set to 700 degrees. Um, this is a nice uh, dual iron Weller what, DEC 1001 solder station. I don't think they even make these anymore. It's rather old. But um, it's a 20 watt iron that he's using right there. And it's just a question of transferring the heat to what you're working on and then putting the solder on the part and letting it flow from the part to the board. There you go. So there's 14 solder joints. Like a boss. Like a boss. Now, uh, having a nice pair of diagonal cutters is helpful yes. to trim the legs. And trim the legs as you go because they'll get in the way. Yeah, I'm, I was just going to give it a minute for everything to cool off. And mm -hmm. then I was going to go back and roughly yeah. the order that I did you it. You hit me in the mouth. Did I? Did Aim for the camera, people. I'm, why? Damn. He's done nothing to me. He's nice. Let's see if we can hit a couple camera guys. <laughs> These little ones fly far too. Yeah, they do. And that's a good set of diagonal cutters. Yeah, you can these, hear these snap. are good. These here, those are suck. mushy. Yeah. yeah, when you're using your, your diagonal cutters, get a good pair of dikes because the cheap ones are just mushy. A good pair has good hand grips, and you can do this a thousand times. You want big, fat hand grips. Um, this is a pair from Husky, and they're actually really decent. Cobalt makes some good ones too. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so there's our first step. And now we have our capacitors on the board. Okay. So what do you want to do next? Let's do the diodes. Get you want to do the, diodes? Yes, because okay. they're close into the board. I've got the quad. All right, now. Duals. Let's take duals, a look at what we got. And zeners. The zeners are the tiniest, so let's do those first. Okay, the zeners are the tiniest. And there's actually a number written on there. It's a glass zener. Okay. So I can't really read it, but I'll let you see if you can see it. The number. It'll be one N, and then on a second row, the rest of the nut. Zero digits. eight. Zero eight. Two three. I, I've got a. All right. Well. So a plus sign. Two three zero eight. Okay, well, suffice to say... And what looks like a... Yeah, it looks like an F or a plus sign. It's kind of weird. It looks like an F2308 or 0B. Don't think it would be a B. Anyway, it's going to be D9 okay. and D8. Okay, where on is our D9 schematic? and D8? Okay, they are both going to be in this area right here. You okay. can see the symbols there, D9, and they'll be diagonal to each other. Okay. So and I you'll just... notice on the board, there's a little flaggy thing. Yeah. All right. 
Um, one of them is listed with an actual bar. The other is got the little flag on the end. It matches the bar on the zener. Okay, so I just I start by bending these over. Yes. And I just and go a little bit past the diode. Correct. And you're going in D9 and D8 here. Okay. So... So that's on the board, this one and this one? Yeah. Okay. And the little black bar goes towards the bar end? Yes. So I just stick that in there like that? Yep. And okay. set her on down. Pull it tight? Pull it tight, yep. And then splay your legs a little. Boop. Okay. And I'm going to grab the other one. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to fold these over. Now. What this is, you can see I got on the schematic while you're doing that. Um, the diodes are set up to clamp what's coming in here. This These is are glass. Yes, they are. Um, for what I'm running here, we're working with um, putting a current transformer on the secondary connection, you know, the secondary coil connection to ground. We're going to put a current transformer on that so we're directly sensing the waveform coming off the secondary. Okay. So we're getting the resonant frequency of it. And feeding into our electronics over here, we don't want to put more than 5 volts, so these are like 4.7 volt Zener diodes, and we have a sh Shakti? I can never... Shot Shotley. Shotley. I can never pronounce his name. Shockley. Shockley. Okay, that's his name. He's got a diode named after him, and they're going... It's William Shockley, I think. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I could be totally wrong on that, but he's one of the guys that invented the transistor, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Well, anyway, we got him set up, you know, nose to nose. It's okay. the exact same thing going backwards, so it goes both ways. So okay. coming out of this, we're going to only get zero to five volts. All right. And that's the whole point of putting these in. So the next thing we need is the other set of diodes, and these I'll you take... You want me to solder these first? I'm going to have you put a couple... I'm going to have you put all the diodes in and then solder oh. them. Now, I've used right. Zener, Zener, is it Zener or Zener? I like Zener. Okay, you like Zener. I've heard somebody call them Zener, which really bothers me. He's English, me. though, probably. Um, but okay, I've, used, 4, I've used Zener diodes before. Um, you can use them in voltage uh, regulators. No, I've used them in uh, crystal radios. Really? Yeah, like when I was a kid. All right. These, um, it's written right on them. They're 1N5319s. Okay. And that, now, is this the size that it'll be on the official kit? I believe so, yes. These are, these are good. These, uh, 5819. I think I said 53, but it's 5819. Okay. So that's number 7 and number 10. And so these right are the two right next to it. Yes. Now, are these off, like, here and here? They're... Because they're, like, on angles. They're yes, like they corner. are. Okay. Um, and, and I just line up the bar? You just line up the bar. Okay, so I'm going to put that one in there. Like that, and you guys can see that right there. And go ahead and suck it right there. You might need yeah. one to pinch on either end of the thing because it's a little bit. That's why I wanted to solder the other ones first because I got so many leads in this area. Hang on, let me grab my leather one. Because these aren't as delicate as the other ones, and you can, you can take and pull them down a little bit if you have to. Okay, when you go to bend them, just bend them a little tighter into the uh, okay. part. It's like you left a little space before it got the bend, and it's like I'm yeah. bending it down tight. All right, well, bend them down tight to the part. And it's okay if they sit up a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything. You know, I prefer everything being flush to the board. Yeah, but you're kind of fussy. I tend to be. I'm going to leave this one up high. That way they'll know I built it. <laughs> okay. See? There, let me see the other one. There's the other one. All right, and the other one goes in the other right one. And here. Make sure and you got to make sure the bar line's up. Yep. Get in a hole. And so yours are too close together. And the holes just barely fit these big leaves. Yep. Like the Zener just Zener just fell into place. Now see yours is Well grab your yours is grab your leatherman and pull her in the pull her in tight. Man, amateurs. I've been doing this for sixty-four years I've been building these. You're coming 64. in here, I'm teaching a new kid. Okay, to before build this you stuff. do anything drastic, would you let me hold that board for just a second? You gonna do something to it? Yeah, what you're doing right now. You're oh, okay. Okay, here. It's like you're gonna do exactly what I'm doing, but properly. Well, I'm gonna do it where I'm not worried about you destroying anything. I'm not gonna break. These should be built by amateurs. I'm like the token amateur. It's my job. 
you can make them all professional, people are going to be disappointed. You can really just pull on them that hard? Yeah, that's it. there you go. Huh? There, you see? Oh, nice and flush. Wow. There, that's better. Kids got mad skills. You're learning this fast. I'm proud of you. All right, now, there's six more diodes on the board. Okay. There you go. And they go in the other six spots. There's four of them together and then two of them off by themselves. Okay. These are all 1N4001s. And four of them are used as a uh, bridge rectifier. Okay. And two of them are used to, again, clamp voltage. So if you get above five or underground, or you sh shoot under, um, it'll clamp your voltage so you're only at zero to five volts. Okay, so there here's our bridge rectifier over here because I see four all together. Yep, and you'll notice they alternate for the, ba the bars. Yep. And then I see two more over here. Yep. Okay. So Which are the two for over here? Uh, all these are the same. Oh, these are, so it doesn't matter where I start them? Yeah. Okay. Just, you, you just now, the ones them. before this are different. Those are, yes. those are important. But these, we just cram them in wherever they fit. Yes. And just line up the bars, and it's really easy to do. I'll pre-bend everything here for you to make life a little easier. And because you mock my bending ability. Yep. A little bit. A whole lot, actually. I don't know why you got to be so mean to me. Because you're so mean to me. I am nothing but nice to you. You yeah, have a good reason. I am the nicest person you know. Really? Oh, totally. But you know a lot of really mean people. That's, that's my theory. Me, I'm sweetness and light. Little ray of sunshine. You know, I'm getting pretty good at this. I could do this for a living and make 15 cents a day. Okay. <laughs> Used to be when they were mass producing, mass producing, you know, transistor radios out of Japan back in the 60s or 70s, uh, the, the workers in Japan were being paid, you know, piece work yeah. at a half a cent a solder joint. Wow. So it's how many solder joints can you do in a day? That's your paycheck. I'd like to be doing production work for half a cent a solder joint with, you know, modern pick and place gear and all that. Okay, so they're all in there. Yes. There's our bridge, and you can see they alternate just like the picture says. Mm -hmm. And then I've got my two other ones over here. Yep. And those both point that way. Yep. Um, and then we've got all our other little stuff down here, which is just following the picture. It's really not hard. Exactly. But all these two and these four are all the same, so you can just you don't have to worry about reading them. They're just right. those are the big ones. That's we we left those for last. All right. So okay. we put the board down. I got my weapon. Where you want to hear? That's you can be anywhere you want to be. Are you? Oh, oh, flux! Flux! Don't forget the flux. flux. Yeah, we didn't use a lot of flux on the other board, but and you'll notice the diodes. There's nice big pads on most of them. The Zener is kind of smaller, but the 4001s have nice oval pads. You cannot have too much flux. Really, if I could just dip the entire board in flux, I'd do well, it. Well, that might be a little I am, extreme. I am a huge fan of flux. Yeah. And this is the no-clean stuff, so you don't have to worry. Yeah, about it's everywhere. We have um, an ultrasonic cleaner at my office, so we have uh, water-soluble flux, which These is pads actually... are huge. It's, the water-soluble stuff is actually better to work with. It's easier to work with, but you have to clean it off and you have to clean it off really well. Just running it underwater with a brush isn't enough. You need the ultrasonic cleaner. We found out the hard way because we thought we cleaned the stuff off once and the boards were all up and running and then six months later, the residue of the flux absorbed moisture from the air, just humidity in the air, and it turned from a nice, clear, indetectable film to a white conductive sludge oh, on the back man. of the board. And we had like 30 circuit cards, and these were big, like, you know, 10 by 12 circuit boards that were just covered in this white goo. And they stopped working. You think? Yeah, the problem was they were already deployed and out in the world, and boy, was the customer mad. And the customer was a very large automotive company. So somebody we've heard of, probably. Yeah, you don't tick them off. They get really, really irate when you do that.
some of these are really close together. I might have to trim some and come back. That's totally acceptable, whatever floats your boat. My boat floats on solder. On the oval pads, feel free to put more solder on, like the other. Yeah, I, I, they take a lot to yes. cover them, so I've just been make sure it on. you just make sure you you cover all the gold. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good rule. Or you know, make sure the pads covered. On the other, on the green boards, they're not gold flash, so the pad looks the same color as the uh, the solder, so it's not as easy to tell. Um, for these, if you want to use the bigger iron, you can go ahead and do that. Ah, I could, couldn't I? Yes, we got it here. Yeah. It's like I got a two iron. This thing's board. this thing's fast. I like it. I get better contact with the big Exactly. Iron. Well, for that's, you know, large pads. I figure most people are going to be using a $25 iron that they picked up from you know, Radio Shack or wherever. But it's like you, this is a little, that, the iron you're using right now is a little much to try surface mount on, but you can certainly do everything on this board with that iron. I thought you did a solder bridge there. No! Okay. Well, I did do a solder bridge, but it's way out here on the end of the that, lead, and I'm going to cut oh, that off cut anyway, that off. so it doesn't matter. All right, you've got a couple of pads over there that need a little more solder. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get over in here, heat that up a little bit there. Yeah, when you heat it up, you can see the solder just reflow around yeah, the part. Yeah, and then it's cool. Well, actually, then it's rather don't, warm, but... Don't start with me, young man. Okay. Just bend, ah. just bend the lead with the end of the solder iron. Oh, get I it can out do of the that, can I? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Hadn't thought of that. That's why you make the big money, Paul. Mm-hmm. And you got one more hiding under there. Okay. That's all of them. All right. Now Quippy I'm going to get that a haircut. Camera crew's diving for cover right now. Oh, that looks way more better. And now, look at all the stuff we got on there. Yep. That's really cool. Okay, um, time to start with the bigger things. Uh, let's go with the headers next. You want to do the headers or resistors? No, the headers are difficult to stick in place, okay. and the resistors we got stood up on end, so they're oh, going to be a okay. little tall. All right, so I've got my headers. Yeah, and take and the jumper off so you don't inadvertently solder the jumper to the header. Oh, that never happens. You want to do, right, that, one do, that, do that, that one first? Do that one first. Do that one first. Okay, the header it's got goes one, there's only one spot. right here. Yep, that's okay. it. Now, if you flip it over on the table. And do it without the, the table thing will, will right, hold You hold the, the board. The table will hold the thing in place. Okay, I'm going to flux it. Good thing to do. Use the large iron on this one. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm going to get recentered here. Okay, and I'm, good. I'm seated good. Okay. A little bit of solder. Smack it. We're good. Wish you wouldn't do it nose down like that. Do it on the side. No, you do that and you'll bend it. I do it nose down. It's, it's impact rated. It's all right. I'm a drummer. I'm an authority on banging things. All right. Okay, we'll let it sit for a second to solidify and... Don't blow on it. Yeah, don't blow on it. There, slide right. the jumper onto the middle two. The middle two. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Now, now this now the one, headers and the... Um, now, I see the... I'm assuming this is a header here? Yeah, and you can see there's a little line on there. Yeah, that's that. where the, the back bar goes? Yep. Okay. So and there's put three that on of there. them. You yep. want to do these one at a time? And flip yeah, just it go all three. You can hold it? I don't know that you've got the stones, Mr. Kidwell. I've got where's experience. The Away at the other end. Away at the other end, okay. Okay, give me the board. Okay. I'm going to hold on to those two. And I'm going to hold on my to flux pad. You got I'm it. Flip it over. I am totally not going to burn you when I do this, really. Okay, well, my fingers are going to okay, be I'm going to flux that. Flux that, and flux this. Now, while I'm soldering these, tell them what each header 
does. Okay, the header you're doing right now is the one where the power comes in. So this goes off to That's a, why this header is right next to the rectifier. That's right. That one is the 12 volt AC input. Okay, what's this, this one? This one here is the one that goes off to the, um, the G gate driver transformer. It's the output of the board. Okay. So those are our two most important headers yes, right there. Yes, and then this one is the detector. It'll go either to your antenna or your uh, current transformer, whichever one you're going to use. So you want and these to be the really in, good mechanically sound solder yes, joints. Yes, these, these are, are going to get connections to the outside world. Okay. And we're solid and... You happy with that? We're getting, we're getting, we're getting along. It's starting to look like something. All right, um, resistors? Okay. Uh, yeah, we can do resistors next. Okay, I've got, <coughs> I've got two that are the same and two that are also the same but different. Okay. No, those might be different. Those two are the same. These two are these different. These two are different. Than the, there's three different size resistors. Okay. And so the two that are the same. Now, we got a 1K on our detector circuit okay. and a 100K. Okay. And then we got a 10K down here. And, and a 1K over 1K. here. Now, All right, I've uh, got the two 1Ks. The two 1Ks are resistor 4 and resistor, resistor one. 1. All right, you fold them. Okay, these. Oh, no, these just get folded over, don't they? One end, yeah. And if right. I fold opposite the uh, percentage band. Which is the gold. Which is the gold. Okay, these so. These are five percenters. So there's, there's your re values there. Yeah, that's So we're going to fold it on this side. And we only yeah. fold one side, and you fold it all the way over. That's right. Okay, like that. That's, yes. That's what you want. Correct. Because we actually stand these on end. Yes. Now, where do they go? Now, R1 and R4, one of them is going to be, what's that one right there? Is that R4? That is R4, 1K. So yes. I'm going to stick this in, and you put the body of the resistor where over the, the hole. Where the ring is. Yep, yep, where the ring is. Like that. Yes. And R1 is on the output of our fiber optic um, receiver. Okay. And the fiber optic receiver is going to be over here, so the resistor, I think, is right next to it. And Slide this is R1? One. R1. Yeah, you can read it. That's R1. Um, so that goes in there for the body of the resistor and then in there for its tail. Yep. There we go. You now, can see it just like that. Now, the other Flip two are going to it. be right next to it. You can see the two spots for These them. These two spots? One of them is a 10K, and, and the other is a 100. Okay. How Here, there's the resistors. Give them a lesson in color codes, Paul. Okay. I'm going to get my magnifier. He's got to put his cheaters on. And I'll put my cheaters on. Okay. Um, there's a mnemonic to remember the color code. It's Yeah, but do you know a polite one? Because uh, I know a mnemonic to remember the color code, and we can't yeah. talk about that on the air. Well, it involves, it's, it's racist yeah, and yeah. sexist. It's racist so and sexist at the same time. That's what so. makes it memorable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see, make sure I got the right ends on here. All right, I got... Black, 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 red, yeah. and black, 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 orange. Okay. So black, 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 red is one zero zero with two more zeros. So that's 10K. Okay. You want to pull your meter over, we can double check. Always safest to do that, but. We can, but I trust you. All right. You've done and this once or twice. This is black, 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 orange. So that, or change that. It's brown, black, black, one zero zero. Yeah, I've got brown, black, black, red, red. and then. So that's Brown. 10, yeah, that's a 2 per, that's a 1% resistor, actually. Okay. So this is 10K? That's 10K. That okay. goes in the 10K hole. And the 10K hole is the one that goes here. So the other one's the 100K. And that's the 100K. Okay. And the 100K is brown, black, black. Orange. Or, that's orange? That is orange. It's not really an orange. You want to check it with the meter field. No, free, I trust but you, but it's not really, I wouldn't call that orange. I think Pantone should be involved here. Pantone. And they should get the deciding vote. Because Pantone doesn't say that's orange. But you do electronics, and I do with video and color all day long. All right, so there you can see all of our resistors in place. We've yep. got our 100K resistor, our 10K resistor right next to it. 
Um, what was this? 1K. That's a 1K, and this one over here is a 1K as well. Yep, so we've got four resistors. Okay, so we can solder all those at so this point? So we can solder all those at you this point. You hold board, I got my flux. Yeah. And for the fluxing, you could go around and dab it, but I just go straight down and just right in the middle mush, of them. Yeah. yeah. Just, just mush Although it right it in. it looks like you're mushing the tip on my flux pen there. I'm okay with that. You know why? Because it's mine. It's yours, not my flux pen. Oh, and there's a one in the middle. Got that one. Yeah. And you can't have too much flux. Flux is awesome. Flux, it's made of unicorn poop. Okay. Poop? No. Unicorn poop. This is the high quality stuff. It's made from their blood. You're killing my dreams, Mr. Kidwell. Now, resistors, you really don't have to worry about overtemping because they're designed to get hot anyway. Mm -hmm. ah. There we go. Then I'm gonna move Bend that, that way. There you yeah. go. I want yeah. to give it time to cool off. All right. And there's your resistors. There. We're getting close. We're getting there. Now I'm going to trim these. Yeah. Beautiful. Look at that. Getting there. The population grows. Yes. Okay, next. Let's do the uh, capacitors. capacitors. Oh, the, the, you want to do the capacitors or the varistor? Uh, we can do them all at the same all time right. if you want. No, oh, man. Now, systems. Got the electrolytics system. are polarized. Yes, electrolytic now, capacitors. Now, the fun thing is, on a circuit energy. card, they put a little plus. You okay. can see a little plus right there? Yeah. And a little plus right there. Which works out good because under resistors right they put a little minus. Yeah, they do. Look, see, there's a little yeah. minus stripe down the side. So that, so that stripe that says minus on these goes opposite the plus. Okay, so you and see to, the plus. Yeah, and you'll notice the plus is the long wire. Yeah. So they do that, but they, they mark the minus side. Of the, and I have no idea why they decided to do it that way. Do all lytics come with the minus mark, not the plus? Uh, but the plus is the long wire? Well, all the, the lytics that I, all the lytics that I have seen were like getting niche con. If, if the plus of, is the long wire, and it is, because you can see on the capacitors, there's your minus, and the plus is the long wire. Okay. Yeah. Then you just ignore that, ignore the cap, pick up the cap, see the long wire, and it's stick like, that in your yeah, plus. Yeah, I wouldn't ignore it. I'd take a look at the cap and make sure the marking on it says where the minus is, and you make sure it's okay. in the right spot because these things. They'll, they'll Billionth of a penny a piece and made a hundred billion at a time. That's and, fine, but if you only got five and you need five, you don't want to kill one. Yeah, yeah. So and it'll get pregnant and blow up on your board. They get pregnant? They get fat, they expand, they, the end blows out. They, they, they have, you'll notice the stress marks on the end of the cap, that's where it'll burst through. They plump when you cook them. They plump when you cook them. And we get a lot of old donated electronics that are easily fixed just by soldering in some new capacitors. Yeah, remember your video, you had two video cards where every electrolytic yeah, cap on yeah. them had burst? I'm High kind of, quality. I'm, I'm kind of hard on video cards though, so. Yes. All right, we'll flip it, they're splayed. Now here's, you can see the locations of all the capacitors on there. They're mm -hmm. really big cans. Those are all our filter caps. So we flip that over and we flux. Just like that. You gotta have the sound effect. Torpedo. The loss. sound effect is very important. Yes. Part of the assembly process. Big iron. It's like you got leaves. I want the little iron. You want the little iron. I want the little iron. Because these plump when you cook them, they're sensitive. So you hold the board. It's just, I don't need you to, I just want the opportunity yeah. to be able to burn you. Okay, that's the... Now, how much heat you need is really a function of the part you're working on. It's a question of the thermal mass that the thing has, how much you gotta heat it up in order yeah, to get Yeah, analytics, you don't have to get that hot. And yeah, they're, they're, you're, you're not gonna be soaking up a lot of heat. The, the diodes have heavier leads, so there's more material to heat up. 
These, the leads are real nice and fine, so you don't have that big an issue. Well, I like the smaller iron for these because the pads are so tiny mm -hmm. for all the rest of them. And it just makes it easier to get in there and see what I'm doing. I just want it to be pretty. Want it to be pretty. It's looking pretty. It's getting there. This is really nice. And see, if you build yours this nice, and you take the time, it'll probably even work. Well, that would be a, the goal here, is to have a functioning coil. Well, yeah, but I built a lot of things that didn't work the first time. That's why this is a kit. It's designed to be played with. It's designed to try new and different things. And There you go. I think that's all of them. Uh, that is. Okay. Haircut time. I think you have more fun doing that than any other part of this project. I like the lead clipping. You're going to put somebody's eye out. Okay, so there's our current step. Capacitors. Okay, the um, varistor, yes it is. The varistor goes right there. That's a really cool symbol for it. Yeah, and you'll notice the, the, the pads aren't lined up with each other. That's because yeah. the varistor, the, the leads oh. aren't lined up with each other. So when you wind up with a thing on the board, it'll actually line up with the uh, silk screen. Yeah. Look at that. Some thought went into that one. Hey, you can see it on the bottom. Yeah, they're not, they're, they don't line up. <laughs> but it'll, those part will wind up straight if you use the big one for that. Because yeah. those are big pads, big leads. Let me get over no, here, let me. Yeah, you're, you're the guy who drives this stuff. And you notice it takes a little bit more to heat these things up? Yeah, these are pretty serious. Yeah. Okay. okay. Trimmy, trimmy. We're kind of running out of parts over there. I'm liking it. All right, next yeah. we'll do the power units. Okay, now. There's our power units. There we go. We got 12 volt and then 5 volt. Okay. Power comes in, 12 volt, and then 5 volt. Okay, one's labeled KM25ABE3, LM2940T. Okay, and the other? Uh, BA50JC5. There's got to be more numbers on there. 237H47. You don't know either. Well, when I had them, and they were in the baggie, and the label was right on the bag, so I just read them. But, uh, oh yeah, and right underneath it, it says 12.0. It does? This one does. This one doesn't. This one doesn't. The bottom line, what's it say? Oh, I thought that was T2.0. No. That's a one? <laughs> that's a one. It doesn't look like a one. So that's the 12 volt one. Okay. And this is the 5 volt one. So, 12 volt one goes next to the... Uh, so this is no, the no, 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 no. Over here by the uh, bridge rectifier. Okay, 12 so volts this first. is a 12. And notice the... I see there's a square pin. No, take a look at the, the extra bar on there. Yeah, there's there. a... Yeah. That's where it would hook up to a heat sink if so you want. So it goes like that. So it goes like it that. Because it goes in a heat sink. And it goes right in the hole. Do they need a heat sink? Um, they shouldn't. Okay. Um, it's something you can add if you feel like it. They okay. sell little snap-on or... And you can get these that any electric like Mauser would have that for... Yes. It's a very common Under part. Under a buck. So there you go. Okay. And just flip her over. And again, large leads, large pads, I would say big iron. Okay. Hold it. Okay. Got now the I'm big going. iron. Oh, I'm going to. Doosh, doosh, doosh. Doosh, 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 doosh. Doosh, 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 doosh. Doosh, 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 doosh. You got me. A little bit. Okay. Do the that ones that totally are straight. Accidental. And yeah, right. Uh, before you solder the bent one, straighten it up. Okay. 
you can see the solder, the flux heating up on the board and, and literally boiling to clean the uh, oxide off the part and the, uh, the board. That's the purpose of flux. Flux is a heat activated cleaning agent. Okay, and then straighten, straighten. You're happy with that? I'm happy with that. I actually will straighten the leads on my resistors and capacitors and everything uh, when I do it because if you ever have to replace a part, desolder something, it's a lot easier to desolder if the legs are straight than if they're bent. You can hear them yeah. landing on the other <laughs> I'm end. I'm going them. by time for how far they go. Okay. Show on camera. What do we got? All right. Now we have. All right. We've got we're some big down. Stuff on we're here. down to the uh, the wire here. Okay. What do you got? You got. I've the, got the sensor. Let's go ahead and do the sensor. Okay. And. It only goes in one spot. It's over here. Yep. Okay. Now um, the. The sensor has three wires. Yes, I've got three little holes and then a big hole for the thing. Right now. Okay. That's a photo detector, and there's a little circuit card inside there. That'll pull out of this holder. There's a, so, there's a circuit card there's in there? Little tiny embedded in the plastic of okay. the, uh, the photo So you can see detector. the three holes where it goes. Yep, and there's two little plastic pegs on the bottom of the, the holder, and they go okay. down into the board. And hold the board a second. You're going to put... I'm going to put the nut and bolt Hold on, you're not down through the... Uh, no, but I will be in a second. I want to get the nut and bolt Well, no, the, the pegs aren't in. Yeah, I will be in a second. Want to get you put the bolt just the, like on the interrupter the, kit. The, yeah, the, the bolt goof. goes up from the bottom. Yep. And just get that started and spun down. Yeah. Give me a second. So I wanted to do this out on camera. Okay. But the um, the pegs are like they're not they're they're a clearance fit. Yep. A tight clearance I'm, fit I'm on the holes. I'm getting those in. I got the pegs in. And now I'm going to grab my Leatherman. And screw the nut down. Yeah, don't yank on the wires on this one. Yeah, right? yeah. So, and I'm just getting it all nice and gentle and cool. And as I'm doing this, you can see I have the flat part of the nut to the thing, because if the pointy part's on there, it'll mess with it. But the flat part will just it'll hold it. It'll like actually hold the nut it, it'll hold until it right you there. get really cranking on it at the end. It'll yeah. hold it. I'm just going to ease that down. And you don't, you don't, it's, it's not like you're, you're not bolting on a transmission cover. You're just, just nice and easy. Yeah. It's to keep it's it from snug. flexing while you're yeah. playing around and with the And you don't have to splay any of those leads because that's going to hold it right there. Exactly. I'm going to need some flux. So, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. All right. And again, I, this was a, I custom did the pad myself for the, or the, the footprint, so I put the oblong pads on there to make the soldering a little easier. And I appreciate it. You going that extra mile to make that happen for me. Thank you, sir. It's like if, I'm, if, I, have, if I, I use Eagle to uh, do my circuit cards, and if I got to make my own footprint for a part, I'm going to make it the way I want it. That looks beautiful. Now I want to examine that up close to make sure I didn't. Yeah, I don't. I thought I might have had a little solder bridge there, but I don't. Oh, yeah, you're better than you thought you were. Yeah. With, with when you're using the flux, sometimes it's almost impossible to make a solder bridge. The flux it really everything off. The, the flux really helps avoid. That. All right, we've only got four things left. Uh, we have, flip side of that foam, yep, please. We have the four sockets for yes. the chips. These. Now the, the chip sockets I notice have polarity too. There's a notch. Well, on it's there. it's it's the notch. It's the you put the notch from the the socket the same end as the notch of the chip. Yeah. That way it's it's just easier so to see. So it all see. just works. It all just works. Yes. So I'm just going to put these in. It's really easy to, hold, to see where they go. If you look, 
the, the oh, sockets have, have little have, things. They're, they're little bendy legs, so they snap in place. So this isn't like the interrupter. No, this, these, these just, I guess, we just ordered the, we ordered these sockets special. We had to get them UPS readed in here in time for this video. So I thought, well, if we're going to be spending that much for shipping, we might as well get the good parts. Well, I think that we should always use the good parts in these kits and keep this as a repeating thing for using the slightly more expensive sockets because it makes it easier when you got to solder it up. You and having fun over there? I'm trying to figure out how to get the thing in the damn hole. Well, give, give it here, I'll get it for you. Got it, Dad, I got it. It just took me a second. I, yeah. I, I wanted now, to make sure I had it lined up and you have to push a little bit harder than I'm initially comfortable pushing these. Yes. The, um, you, we started with the shortest parts on the board and we built up to the tallest parts on the board. Yeah. The exception now these are being the biggest. The sockets, they lock in place. Yeah. So you so don't have to worry about them falling out the backside because they're in there. They're not going to come out. Lots of flux. Tons of flux. Yeah, you used a lot of it that time. I'm smelling it. Yeah! You like the smell of that I stuff. I like it. It makes me happy. Okay, here. You're driving so that they can see at home. Okay, cool. now. Uh, small iron on these. Small iron speed and soldering. You speed, ready? Yes. You don't want to melt the socket. You don't want the solder to flow up into the socket. Although I'm using sealed bottom sockets to minimize that. Uh, early on, we bought cheap sockets that had open bottoms. And if you got a little over rambunctious on soldering, the solder would wick up the pin and into the socket and fill the hole of the socket so you couldn't get the chip in. That would be bad. That would be bad. That needs a little more there, okay? You know, you can't claim that you solder like a crazed monkey anymore. No, I'm actually getting pretty good ease at this. It's, soldering is an art form. It's not something that you can learn in a book. You know, I mean, you can read about it, but it's a, it's a learn by doing sort of thing. And the more you do it, the better you get. So it's a case where you know, practice makes perfect. So this is neat. I've, I've not only learned how to build my own Tesla coil, which you, you know, is something I need to know how to do. I've, I've learned how to solder. I'm so proud. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. I love you. All right. There we go. Now, the reason we're using sockets on this board, where we didn't on the interrupter, is this board is in a rather harsh environment. I mean, we're right under the Tesla coil. Okay. And bad things can happen. Um, depending on what you're doing, you could blow your little 8-pin chips. It's like I've blown a couple myself just playing around with the little mini SSTC we've got over there. Okay. Um, if you screw around with it, it's entirely possible. So we socket the chips on this to make them real easy to replace. There you go. Hey, guess what? what? You're done. There we go. We made it. All right. Now, well, we now got to plug the chips in. We got to plug the chips in. From the schematic. From the schematic. Yeah. Okay. What chip goes where? All right. We have a flip-flop, which is a 74HC74, and that's U4. Okay. Hang and on. on board, that's U4. 74? Right? 74. And that's a big one. 
Yes, Got it's it. a 14 pinner. All right. So you remember how I showed you how to straighten yep. the leads? Yep, so we roll just, these down. Just gently, a little, a little bit. bit. You don't like want to go over, you don't want to go overboard. Yeah, we did that in the first video where we learned how to fold those over. Now okay. where's it go? And get, it goes right here and make sure you get pin one at the right end and you can see- Pin the, one's towards me. The notch is at that end. All right, and these just push in place. Just push in place. If there's no gently, soldering make or nothing. Sure your, make sure your legs are lined up. Yep, yep. It's really not hard to do. I mean, you just line it up and there you it go. makes a really weird sound when you plug it in. Okay, so that's in. All right, the other large one is the... Uh, I want to do the two little ones first. You're going to do the two yeah. little ones? Okay. Now, one's something 1P one and one's 2P. Okay, the two little ones... Um, I got the 1P. Where's 1P go? 1P goes in U... Where's the designator on that? It didn't show up on the screen. Show. That's why I couldn't figure it out. You're like, I need to see. look in the print, man. Um, it's right on I need the print. my magnifier. Check the print, man. Check the print. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it's, print. it didn't Just look put... at the print. It's not on the print because it's a prototype. prototype. We're still beta testing. It's on the print, Oh, the fun man. part. Okay, the first one is U2, and the second one is U3, and U2 is that one, and that gets the inverting ones, so put uh, the 22 into U3, no, no, 22 goes into U2, and the 21 goes into U3. So, the 22 goes on the right one. 21, 21 22. That works. Okay, and in reality, the pin ones face each other, and the pin one, if you look on the circuit, or on the, on the, the chip, okay. you'll see a little dot. Good, what? I want you to look real careful on the silk screen right down in there and tell me what you did. Okay, you'll notice on here that pin one is facing in on each end where on the silk screen below it, you can see the little, very clearly see the little notch for where pin one goes. This may be due to the fact that I'm kind of dumb and I've never done this before. So that little notch should be pointing this way, but here's the cool thing. If you, if you look down here, it doesn't really care. And as long as when you look on your circuit, you have the little dot here, we know that's pin one, and we know the silk screen's right, and these are just little metal bars that pass it through. So here's our little secret. This is the important thing to keep in mind, is that you can screw this up a little bit, and there's screw-ups that actually matter, and there's screw-ups that don't, and if I plug that in there like that, and pin one on the chip is at this end, and pin one on the silk screen is at that end. If the socket's backwards in the middle, it's not gonna magically twist the connections around. It's gonna work fine. So now, pin one here, and we'll double, and this is why we check things as we go. You can see right through the socket, the silk screen down in there, and you can see that's pin one. And here, on our little chip, there's a little, the little shiny circle, so that's pin one. Because the big chips have a, have a notch in the end, the little chips just have a circle on them. And we roll those over a little bit flat. We roll those over a little bit flat. And then we find our pin one, which is right there. We put that on the thing. Line it up, make the funny sound. Crunch. Okay, now and we only got one chip left. No, and that's how you do is it. 74 HC 14N, which is Schmidt Traeger. Schmidt. Schmidt. Trigger. Schmidt. Uh, inverter. Uh, there's six of them on the chip. Okay, and I can um, see. We're using half of them. There's my pin one. There's pin one. And it should and be pointing this notch. way. And I, I check through to the silk screen to make sure I did it right. Yep. Just line it right up. Right there. And make sure I get all my legs in. Because you can't push down unless they all go in the right little hole. You want to make sure that they don't just go in a hole, but that they go in the right hole. And all and of And then the, the hole. funny sound. Crunch. Like that sound. Yes. All right, hey Paul. Yes. I made a whole circuit card right there. Look at yes, that. Yes, you did. Okay. Isn't that neat? Yes. Now I can't do anything with it yet, but we'll do that in the next video. Correct. Okay. Now, but that's how you put it together. That's your hardware. Yes. So when we're done, what do you mean when we're done? We're when, done. No, when we when, done. We, when we connect it into the rest. Okay. This connector here goes off to our detector, either yes. an antenna or a current transformer on the secondary. Okay. Um, this is our fiber optic input. Okay. This is the output to our gate driver, transformer, and bridge. And this is 12 volts AC coming in right there. Okay, it's beautiful. Yes, it is. All right, so that is your hardware assembly on your GDT driver board.
and it's awesome. It's awesome. That's, that's the that's very first one. one ever made. That's number one. So I am going take your. Uh, I take my thing here. I would use, go ahead and use your what do you, artifact what you do? and scratch it, not just right. You want to carve it right in there? That's what we use. We use an engraver and engrave well, I'm just going to put CB on yeah. this side. Oh, this one is yours. Yeah, so you, you can put your PK. PK or TMB. Do Actually, I want. think TMB's already you got TMB on it. You already got your name on it. Yeah, okay. In the silk screening. Okay, and then, then we'll write on here, this is number one. Yes. This is the very first one. Not sure, I'll do it on camera even. Number one. Yeah, that's the official prototype, which they can see in the light there. See if I get it right there. Number one. All right. And CB and PK. All right, so there you have it. The very the first, first one, signed second. original. Yeah. That's the very first signed original. We want to thank you guys for watching this absolutely thrilling video. And I think that's it. I think we're cool. I think we're cool. All right. Um, yeah, that's it. You can learn more about these at thegeekgroup.org. If you're not a member yet and you just watched this video, you probably should be a member. There's a whole series of these videos where you can learn how to make your own solid state Tesla coils. And this is, this is just the beginning. There's so much more to this. This actually gets really, really cool. So, yeah, that's it. I want to thank everybody for watching. I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.